We're back. My voice. If you guys follow me on Instagram and you've watched my Instagram stories, then you know. Uh, <coughs> it's strained from being at bars with obviously live music because that's what Nashville is freaking known for. Loud live music and then me trying to make friends with strangers. That's what I do at bars, okay? So let's freaking talk about Nashville. I didn't end up vlogging the trip, which I didn't think that I was going to just because I don't like putting my friends and family on camera. I've talked about this so many times before and like I'd rather just be in the moment. Like I legitimately didn't take any photos with my freaking friends. I've got no photos with my friends. We were just like living in the moment and having the best freaking time. So Nashville was a freaking blast. Oh my gosh, I love that city so much. And I seriously think like if I was going to move anywhere or like if I could pick another city to move to, I would move to Nashville in a heartbeat. It's just filled with so many creative, people and just like talented freaking people trying to make it and they're working their asses off doing something that they love and I just love it. I freaking love the environment. I look like a hot mess right now. Oh shit, my battery is gonna die. Hold please. You guys, my freaking throat, like I haven't talked this much today because I've gone nowhere. Like I haven't had to talk to anyone. Just talked a little bit on my Instagram stories but even then it wasn't enough for me to be like, wow, Girl, your voice is just hurting. Like I sound so weird right now, solely from screaming in bars. So here's the deal. Had a great freaking time. I am dying to go back and good old Cameron Monet wants to go to Nashville and I'm like ready to be like, bitch this weekend, let's go. I just, I love it so much. I absolutely do. So before I went on my trip, I actually asked you guys to give me your recommendations on Nashville because I haven't been there since I think I went like 2011, that would make sense. So I haven't been there in 10 years, which is crazy. So I didn't obviously know the good places to go. So I asked you guys on my Instagram stories and I got a lot of recommendations. I compiled a list, I shared that on my stories before I went and I didn't wanna then share my recommendations on my stories because they go away and then I didn't want like the highlight to be buried or whatever. So I figured a video would be best for you guys to be able to refer to this and then I'll actually include a list with all of this stuff down below. So like if you don't wanna rewatch this in the future, you can just save this video and then go back to it. Let's start with some of the freaking things that we did. Oh my gosh, guys, it was, it was so dang good. Let me go to my notes. I have a whole entire list here. So on Thursday, didn't get in, I got in around like five something and then Mallory got in around six and then Hunter got in around seven and we were just like chatting for a while. Didn't really, want to get ready, honestly. Like we were all wearing travel clothes and like Hunter drove 11 hours. So we were like, let's order pizza, hang out. And it was a great, good old time. That's all we freaking needed. Like just to like, I hadn't seen Mallory in five years. Like it had been far too long. We just needed to have a chill, casual chat. The next day we told ourselves that we were not going to be day drinking because we were like, we're 27. We can't day drink all day and then go out at night. But what we decided to do is we did breakfast in the morning. So the first place we went was actually Biscuit Love, which was the top recommendation that I got on Instagram stories. And I think I got like five recommendations for Biscuit Love. So I was like, I gotta do it. I gotta go. And I gotta say for how many recommendations I got, I was not blown away. Like it was by far not the best food that I ate all weekend. We actually ended up going to another breakfast spot the next day, which was like Shep's, I'll put up like the name up here. That was a phenomenal breakfast. All of us had really, really great freaking food. So definitely recommend that spot. I mean, everyone talks about Biscuit Love, so if you wanna go, their biscuits are really different. They're like flaky. It's. It's strange to me, it's strange. It was good, not phenomenal. So that was the first thing that we did on Friday and then after that, we weren't really sure what we wanted to do. So I was like, let's just go downtown to Broadway, walk around a little bit. Cause like we could have gone over like the bridge, which we didn't end up doing. And then I knew like the country hall of fame and all of that stuff because of like 10 years ago, I was like, I know this hasn't changed. So we just Ubered to Broadway, walked down the strip, saw like a ridiculous amount of bachelorette parties as you do. The party buses, the cycling little trolley things, d party buses being pulled on tractor trailers. Like it was amazing. Nashville is very much so a bachelor, bachelorette party kind of place. We decided to walk down Broadway and then I wanted to just like show them the Country Music Hall of Fame I didn't know that we were gonna go in it. We didn't really know what the heck else to do with our time. So we were like, let's check this out. So I think it was like $26 for an adult to go in and 
it was crowded. There were a lot of freaking people there. And if you wanted to read the signs and actually get the full experience, it was kind of nearly impossible. There were so many people. There was also so many signs because it's a freaking museum. And it's very much so older country, in my opinion. Like it's the Country Music Hall of Fame. So like it's got old country music artists. Of course, there's like newer ones that have been induced into it, but induced, is that the right word? So like for me, I'm a newer country lover. Like I've been loving country for years, but it's like, I don't really know old school country. Like saw Johnny Cash and I was like, hey, Johnny Cash. But like, besides that, it was like, it was cool to do, but I would never do it again. It was also just ridiculously crowded. So maybe if you're going like during the middle of the week, it's not as crowded, but on a Friday, it was freaking crowded. After that, remember how I said, we're not gonna go day drinking. Yeah, that was the plan. But we didn't know what else to do with our time. So we were like, let's just go back to Broadway and hop in some of the bars that were recommended by you guys. And actually, I think the first place we went was not recommended by you, but we went to Nudie's Honky Tonk. And that is actually the longest bar in Nashville. Fun fact, they had three different levels Two were inside, one was rooftop, and we ended up going on the rooftop. They had music on every level. I mean, that's what Nashville's known for. So it's like, you want live music, freaking go to Nashville. There's amazing freaking artists, and we're gonna talk about some here in a second. So we ended up going to Nudie's, and then after that, we went to Jason L. Dean's place for lunch. That was pretty good. The live music actually started right as we were leaving. So it's like, we heard a few songs, which was nice. And then we went to Old Red, or Old, I think it's Old Red, which is Blake Shelton's place. And we went to the rooftop there, which is where we met Jerrica. Okay, now this is important because Jerrica is gonna come in to play the following day. Actually, let's talk about Jerrica right now. So we just went up on the rooftop and we were just having beer at every place. So it was just like one beer here, one beer here. We actually got food. And then we ended up getting one beer at Old Red. And there, our bartender was Jerrica and they weren't like too crowded. They weren't too crazy. And my favorite thing to do, okay, Catherine loves making friends with strangers. I absolutely love it. It's like my favorite drunk activity. So we were drinking beer and Jerrica was there and I just started asking her questions about her life. I asked how long she's lived in Nashville. And then she talked about like how she was getting married in three weeks. And then I learned every intimate detail about her wedding, like saw her wedding dress, her flowers, her centerpieces, like literally the whole works. And I then asked her like, after we had been chatting for so long, I was like, since you've lived here, she's lived in Nashville for four years. I was like, what are your recommendations? Where do more so locals go compared to the tourists because like obviously we've hit up Broadway like that we wanted to do that one of the days but like I want to know where the locals go and get that experience so she ended up writing this whole list of places that were like right near Broadway but just off of Broadway and that's what we ended up doing the following day which is really cool anyways Jerrica bless her Kyle got to meet her fiance too love them love their story it was a grand old time after that we went back to the Airbnb, hung out with a little fancy girl for a little bit, and then we got ready because we had a comedy show that night. So we ended up going to one of the recommendations from Kyle, actually, so Jerrica's fiance. He recommended, hold on, let me see, because there was two, Sutler Saloon, which is where we ended up going, and Cinema, which is right beside it, and that's near Zany's which is the comedy club that we were going to that night. So we ended up going to Sutler for dinner. We tried to get into cinema, but it was a Friday night, so they were all booked up, which totally made sense. Sutler was good. Obviously, live music was a smaller-ish place. And I mean, they had like tacos, but then like bar food and stuff. So I ended up getting tacos because I wanted to get shrimp and grits, but then they were out of grits, which is really disappointing. But at the same time, it wasn't because the following night I got shrimp and grits and it was the best freaking shrimp and grits of my gosh darn life. And then we went to Zany's afterwards and I don't even remember, Sam something was the comedian. Now I'm not a person that's like in to comedians, like I just don't do that, but like Hunter and Mallory are trying to turn me into that person now because I did love the comedy show. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What's his name? Sam Morrill, M-O-R-R-I-L. That's who we saw. He was very freaking good. It was a grand old time. Had never been to a comedy show before, and it kind of makes me want to go to them in the future. After that, we decided to not go back down to Broadway and take Jerrica's recommendations of like doing that off of Broadway. What we did instead is we took another one of Kyle's recommendations, her fiance's. 
<laughs> and we went to, I think it was Bell Court Taps. Is that right? Bell Court Taps. And let me tell you, I walked into that place and I was like, this is, this is gonna be my favorite place. I was like, this is gonna be my home. Like tourists are not here. This is where the locals go. And I'm just, I'm gonna thrive. I'm going to love it. So live music, obviously playing, got beers, sitting down for a while. I don't even know how I got started talking with Sean, but he was like diagonal behind me and he was one of the bartenders and he was actually the one that gave me my beer. He's also a musician. He was performing before the guy that was currently performing and we just started talking and he gave me his name. So I looked him up on Instagram, saw that he did a out West road trip. Like I did legitimately a month before me, like September, he did the, he did not the exact same. He actually did hit a lot of other cooler places, but did a similar road trip. So he left for like a second and I was snooping on his Instagram. He came back and I was like, Sean. <laughs> and then I became best friends with Sean. Okay. If I get copyrighted for this, I don't freaking care, but I basically pressured Sean into performing again because I wanted to hear him perform. I was like, I gotta like, I gotta know what we're working with here, Sean, okay? So he sang like the last song of the night before the bar closed down. It was after two o'clock and it was freaking amazing. This is just a lie. It's all the same to me. Someday I'll take off, shake this weight off, and I'll be light and floating free. And I'll go farther, climb higher than all this world is laid beneath my feet. When I've got no strings on me, I'll be wild in my wild. He wrote it like a month and a half ago and I need it to be produced. Like I need it to come out on Spotify because I'm obsessed with it. I'm obsessed with him. So my friends ended up making me leave Sean, which was really disappointing because I was just like, I'm telling you, I will chat up strangers. I will ask them the most intimate details about their life. It's my favorite thing to do when I'm drunk. So Mallory was like, hey, yo girl, I'm tired. We gotta go home. And I was like, well, shit, the bar's closing anyway. So I guess we do. The next day, the original plan was to go to breweries in the morning. But since we drank so much beer the day before, legitimately my body couldn't handle it. Mallory was like, I feel like I ate a loaf of bread and like, we just could not handle it. And I'm so glad that we decided to bail on that. So we ended up going to breakfast in the morning, which was that Shep's place. Phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. The area of town wasn't my favorite that we went to. It just like, it's, it's a definitely an up and coming neighborhood. They're doing a lot of new builds and like, very much so modernizing it. Like it looks like it's gonna be sick as, I almost said like sick as shit and then I don't know why I like censored myself there, but it looks like it's gonna be really, really cool. And it's just like in the process of being flipped. After that, we went back and ended up taking naps because hung over. Like Catherine had, I counted, I had 11 beers on Friday, nonetheless 11 IPAs. Like I was bloated the next day. I felt so incredibly uncomfortable. And of course I was hungover. So we ended up taking a nap and just like hung out for a while. And then since we only did, we did like brunch for our breakfast. So I think we ate around like 10 or so. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, it was definitely because it, it was close to 11. We didn't have lunch. So we decided to just do an early dinner. So. Hunter ended up looking up some places and we tried to go to one restaurant, but they were actually closed. So then we just saw a sign for another one and we were like, screw it, we just need a place to eat. We don't have reservations, so let's go here. And what was the place called? The Farmhouse, okay? It's on the same street as the Country Music Hall of Fame. So it's really not far off of Broadway. It's like a two blocks, I think is like one block, two blocks. Anyways, very, very close to that area of town. The Farmhouse, the best freaking food I've ever had, okay? We got the cornbread phenomenal. Like I can't talk about that cornbread enough. It was so, so good. And then I got the shrimp and grits for dinner. <sighs> you guys, I'm telling you, if you're in Nashville, go to the farmhouse. It was so dang good. All of our meals were so dang good. And I freaking want that cornbread again so bad. Their menu is also marked gluten-free and dairy-free, which is very nice. None of their entrees are dairy-free though. 
just a fair warning, gluten-free. They had like four options. I think like four out of the six were gluten-free, which is superb. I always look out for that for my sister. So after that, we decided to do a tour of Jerrica's recommendations, okay? You remember Jerrica? We were walking from, so it was like, we technically walked like past Broadway to get to our recommendations. We were walking from near the Country Music Hall of Fame, this is Broadway, and then we wanted to get over here. So like we walked like across Broadway and like even when you get relatively close to it, it's just insane. It's absolute madness. And then went to the other side to go where we were going and we were like, whew, like we can breathe again. We can hear our thoughts again. Like this is where we want to be. We do not want to be on Broadway. And funny enough, like almost all of the recommendations that I got from you guys were on Broadway. And I'm just more of like a local, like I want more of a local or like smaller vibe than Broadway is. Like Broadway is very much so the touristy spot. So the first place we decide to go is, I think it's Printer's Alley, okay? cool little area. The one bar I would definitely recommend, we went to Alley Taps. And that wasn't my favorite bar that we went to just because of the music that was being played. So live music in every bar always, it's amazing. But they were more so like rock music where a lot of like, especially on Broadway, you are going to get country music, but Alley Taps at least that night was performing more so rock music, but it was dark. <laughs> I don't know, it just like seemed so dark. It was like in this alley, but it seemed like just like a gem hole in the wall kind of place. And then we went to, what was the other one? Wild Beaver. And that one is significantly larger. They were doing karaoke that night. They've got like a bull that you can ride. They also have a section in the back with games. So they've got like, arcade-like games and then they also have a pool table and we ended up hanging out at the pool table and it was really nice and quiet back there because everyone else was like forward more so near the karaoke section so we just hung out back there all night and by all night I mean that we got I got one drink there Mallory and Hunter both got two drinks there and we ended up there was a bachelor party that ended up coming up so then we talked with Robert for a while because his buddies were watching the like fighting that was going on on the TV. I don't really know what was on, but we ended up chatting with Robert for a while. Good time. After that, we went to, I think it was called Big Shots. It's the kind of place that has jello shots, okay? So if you're down for that vibe, Big Shots was a good place. Live music, great. It's pretty small, but it was still good. Then we decided to go to Wild Horse. And let me tell you, this place was probably my favorite. Just because they have a full stage setup, it was like you were at a concert. Like it was a better experience than being at a concert because for one, like it didn't cost anything to get in. Like you just had to show your ID, they gave you a bracelet and then they had, I think they only had two bars, but there was also two levels, but they had a full stage setup with a whole band like, everything. It was absolutely insane. And we ended up getting a table that was like right up front. And it was amazing. A great freaking time. And we were sitting, hanging out for a while. And then I don't even know why Mallory was saying what she was saying. And then the guy behind her started chanting it too. And it was just like hilarious. And then of course me being the girl that I am, I was like, Ooh, stranger, let's become friends. So I ended up talking with him for, I don't even know how long we ended up closing down that place. Like they turned the lights on us and it was I don't know, I had a great freaking time chatting with him. He's like 24 years old, lives in Illinois, owns five houses. Like, I was just like so impressed with him. We were like talking about like business things. I was like showing him my AdSense because he was like curious about how I made money and like how much money I was making. And it was just like a really cool conversation to have like an intellectual conversation, especially with someone that's like 24. I was like, dude, at 24, like I was broke. I was starting to build up credit card debt. Like you have your life so much more put together than me. And then we talked about like heartbreak and like his last girlfriend and like all of that. It was, it was great. Grand old time. I was definitely hung over the next day. I think like from the beer the day before and then I haven't drank like liquor in so long. So having vodka, it was, it was a doozy. I like did not feel bad the night before, but the next day I felt bad. That was my freaking 
trip to Nashville. I will make more of a just a better organized list in the description bar down below, but I really just wanted to describe the whole experience with you guys because it was such a good time. Like all of the live music is absolutely insane. Everyone I met was so incredibly nice. The strangers that I chatted up for far too long were so incredibly pleasant. I will be back for sure. I'm gonna, I actually have dinner with Cameron on Thursday or Wednesday, Wednesday. And I'm for sure gonna convince her and be like, girl, when are we going to Nashville? Because it was the best friggin' time. Fancy girl is on the couch right now, wagging your tail. Why are you wagging your tail at me? Did you have a good time? Sadly, Fancy did not get to explore because we did not go to like, I, we were gonna go to like dog friendly breweries and stuff and then we ended up not doing that, like I said. So Fancy didn't really get to explore Nashville, but maybe next time we go, you can explore a little bit more. She was really good though. She's always really good, well paved. That's it for this video, guys. I will actually see you with a normal vlog on Monday. I promise it's not, it's not gonna be this with my terrible voice. Hopefully my voice gets better, but we'll see. Okay, bye.